Okay, so we're we are live on YouTube now. So everybody is uh, the other people are doing on YouTube, the other people are doing it. So we can start now. We can start now. Uh, we still, we still, we can start. We already have computers over there. Uh, and we can do this because of time. Uh, who is moderating this section? I need to know. So the person needs to start off before I come in. Yes, yes. I was going to, I was going to, uh, I'm going to put it on to start now. I need to do this. We have a course, and after that, we will keep it on this. Okay. All right. So we're starting right away our short course project management and big data analysts. Analytics, a, a, a critical skill for the 21st century engineer. And this will be taking our uh, facilitator is Springo Egbe, the managing director of um, Pegasus Global Services Limited. Okay, I'll be saying a little too about you. Um, Springo Egbe is currently the managing director of PEGIS Global Services Limited. He's a, 
a highly skilled oil and gas computing engineer with over nine years varied experience in Europe and West Africa. He's highly proficient in big data systems, software development, data analysis, database management, software testing, software documentation, software law, well performance optimization, well optimization design, well test design, and well test interpretation. In 2014, he brought his wealth of experience in software development to join Cyphers Crescent Limited as a petroleum software engineer. Pringle has helped thousands of industries, professional and students learn how to use Excel as a dynamic and powerful analytic tool. And has developed personalized training programs for individuals, private groups, and businesses across the country. He holds a Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from the University of Port Harcourt, a Master's in Oil and Gas Computing from Robert Gordon University, Aberdeen, United Kingdom, and Innovation Diploma in Petroleum Geoscience from Lassa Geoscience School, Port Harcourt. He worked briefly as a lecturer at the University of Port Harcourt between 2009 and 2011. He's an active XP member and has a and has served in various board positions in SBA Port Harcourt section and SB Nigeria Council. He is recipient of the SB International Young Member Outstanding Service Award 2017. Pringle is happily married to Ms. Favor Pringle at death. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Yeah. yeah. So can I go on from here and share my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, I think I need to get the privilege to share my screen uh, from here. Um, you can go on, sir. Okay, share screen. Okay, hello, can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can, we can see your screen. All right, thank you very much, uh, Peter, for this uh, privilege uh, to handle the course for SP Lagos chapter. My name is Pringle Egbe. I work for Peggy's Global Services Limited. So I'll be taking you guys through a course I feel is a learning point for all graduates and all undergraduates uh, in the oil and gas industry and just a, kick, a starting point. And the course is captioned Project Management, Big Data Analytics, a Prequest Skills for 21st Century Engineers. So I will just uh, take off my agenda for this course is going to be on we have an introduction we have uh, industry based skills and we have the technical skills and we have the non technical skills and i will also look at what next and my advice so i will start with an introduction where i'll look at what is skills uh, what is knowledge Basically, the ability we define skills as the ability to do something well, expertise, and we define knowledge as what is learned, understand, and also aware of. Now, these two items are something that are contradicting in our society today. So I will see how I can just throw more light on them and and take it up from them. Knowledge, we have I have very good knowledge in analytics. I can have very good knowledge in analysis. I can have very good knowledge in terms of providing solution. I have a very good educational knowledge in terms of information. I can have good experience. I have good learning. All these guys now I have knowledge I can build over time. But if I look at it that way now, I go back again to look at 
this is where I try to focus on. I have this certificate versus skills. Now, is it that the certificate we have, is it knowledge or the skills? Now, these are some things that we need to understand as engineer or as student where we are focusing in the oil and gas industry or in the labor market. Now, this is certificate. So during this lockdown, you see a lot of people of this nature. I have six, I have seven, I have eight. I've done five courses in Allison. I've done a lot of courses I've done. These guys have certificate, but they don't have skills. So my discussion today is to look at how you can build skills while in schools. And at the end, you have a certificate. I also have skills. So now, Having a certificate alone in Nigeria does not sell. I like me, I don't employ based on certificate in my company. I just believe everybody must have a skill. There must be a unique feature that makes you exceptional. So that part now takes us to uh, the two universities I I like so much in the universities in the US and that in the UK. You see that these two universities, I tried to run a profiling on these two universities. I discovered that the UK universities application. You have the academic interest when you're going for masters. You have the academic potential are the most important for a UK university. But for a US university, what you see, you see you get academic achievement, academic ability, and more historic review. So now these two universities are universities that can give you admission to study petroleum engineering. But the two of them have difference. The first one can give you certificate and knowledge. Why a little of little knowledge? Then the second one can give you certificate and well grounded knowledge. Now, why do I say so? Because a master degree in the UK is about nine or ten months. A master degree in the US is about two years. Now, if you finish your master degree in the US you have an opportunity to go back again for a one-year internship in any organization to build your skills, build knowledge, and as well undergo your project work in that company. So when you're coming back again, guys, that your last year, you do your project defense and you graduate and leave. When the UK, and after six months, you do two months project and you just have less than six weeks to stay in the country and they have to push you out. Yes, um, I graduated from Robert University in Berlin, and um, I will say this based on experience. So, and I'm not criticizing university, but it just left for you to option. What do I want? Going abroad for masters is not enough, but going abroad, what do you want to do in masters? Now, these are some of the things I can. I will say that these are some things I build like skills. I have a mentee when he finished as an. Uh, uh, Agric extension, I asked him to go and build skills. So he went to learn web development. From web development, he was able to build, uh, develop himself on the developing app, was able to develop a website for a company, and he was able to realize $350,000, and he's the one managing that website. He has like this series of websites he's building for companies. Now you see that with this little or no uh, training on web development, so he was able to now start creating resources for himself. So now this is part of his job in Portacourt, and I think he's doing very well for himself. And that part that takes me to the type of skills. Now I I like uh, the Will Smith uh, uh, quote that says, "Talent uh, you have naturally, skills is only developed by hours." And hours and hours of beating on your craft. Now let's step back again to that. Now I am a football fan. Basically, I support one of the teams that everybody doesn't like, Arsenal. And I know most people don't like Arsenal from the legal space. And so this is Messi. I I, I did a brief. I did a very good uh, research on this guy's profile. I see that this guy. It's just a natural born skill. It's also some of the things he does. It's not something I just struggle like everybody struggles in the class to get. Now this guy is gifted. It's a gift, and there are some students that are they have this gift, these skills that are just gifted, and he doesn't struggle. Now, if you not compare this guy now to this other guy, you see that this guy works very hard. This guy is an end skills. 
he worked very hard to acquire skills and you see him and that's why he developed himself to that point now whenever he scores you go like i did it myself i did it myself he knows that this is hard work now this hard work can also earn his skills and naturally you can still have a natural skill but this natural skills alone does not end that you need to also develop it over time in a motion that messi is a natural born skill he still goes for training so if you have your natural born skills without developing or start putting all that things together you just end up with that part that jobless so now that part takes us to the model I, 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 I try to picture a Nigerian model based on the fact that I've been an unemployed graduate and um, I moved to Germany. I travel abroad. I came back. I work in abroad. I came back to Cypher Crescent and also now moved to this position of managing director. I came to understand that this is what the model that works for Nigerian system. First, you need, the, you need God's grace. For everything you want to start, you just need God's grace. The second part now is hard work. You need to work very hard. Then the last part is you need people. You need to connect with people. Now, that is the space that SP gives you. SP gives you this ability to connect with people. And that part analysis is equal to success. But once you don't understand, each of these elements can give you success. You have God's grace. You, know, you can just sit down somewhere. Someone call you. Uh, like today, I can call the president of uh, Lagos Session. Right? If you're able to coordinate this event, there's a position someone needs someone like you. Please, you just need to go uh, apply. You can be working very hard. You end in middle first class. You go you do all night sleeping classroom. That's hard work and also give you success. You may not know anything. You may even make a third class, but because you know a lot of contacts, you have a lot of contact in your 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 mobile number and your LinkedIn space you can give you a job. Now, but these ones are um, various items that can give you success. But at the end, this is the Nigerian model. Now, at the end, I see that one person may need three of these items to, to be successful. One person may not need any of these items to be successful. You just need that God's grace. So now, this item now takes also some of the things that you need to build just to stand a chance at least to get a job in the oil and gas industry. First is, I, 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 I section my courses to, first is the industry-based skills. The industry-based skills now are those skills that we need to get um, started before we get to the industry. Now, this is every graduate's thinking. I finish from Unilag, Futo, Uniport, ETC. I go for NYC. I'll just be waiting for Shell, Total, Chevron, Mobile, Agip to call because I made the first class. Uh, my brother, you sit on, you wait for these guys to, uh, these guys will pack up from Nigeria and they may not call you. That's, it happens then in the 80s and 90s, but not in this our generation, it's our 21st generation. Now, when you get this job, you see that even the guys that are in there don't want to go out. That is the country where we find ourselves. No, it doesn't work out that way. And this is the Nigerian scenario. Where you find yourself, the country is already crying. So at that point, I need to step up. You need to be very aggressive. I tell my, my mentee that made the first class that pack your first class and hustle as if you drop out. Because without that, this country, you see this baby crying as a country, is going to be worse than this in the next five or seven years. So we need to be very aggressive. Now, now multinational take you, then assumption. They employ you, do interview, give you employment letter, onboard training, send you overseas for another training, and you come back, you you just start earning very deep. Now, it doesn't work out this way again because uh, some of these items, most of these multinationals are also struggling. So we also look at this in as much as you finish from school. You can start very small but think very big. Think, start very small, think very big means whatever comes my way, even if it's a company that are producing soap, I'm going to work as a mechanical engineer there. Please take it. But your focus is you think very big. Think like I want to be a mechanical engineer in Shell, Total, Chevron, and Mobile. Build your skills. Now, from that skill, should be you're not relevant. They are going to pay you small, but still think. Take the small pay, think big, and move on. The next part now is I drop this scenario here in my slide because I, I think it's necessary for students to understand this. 
I have a friend, I have two mentees, one of them decided to take up a GTP job as a petroleum engineer, and one of them decided to join laser engineering. And the other guy that works in GTB, they employed him as a full staff and he was earning about two something. And this other guy in Lisa was earning about 80 or 100 as a graduate intern. And this guy in Lisa was really struggling, going to work, managing 80. This guy, after some accessing money in the bank, bought a car, got married. And this guy was still envying this guy in GTB. But while this guy was in Lisa, he was building a lot of skills from reservoir management to wear tests to slick line to studies and to PVT, learning a lot of things. And the guy in GTB was, right, but this guy spent two years in Lisa, and today this guy is already buying property in Port Accord, and this guy is in a rented self-contained. So uh, I believe in crop rotation, though, and crop rotation in the sense that in as much as I have various crop, I can decide to remove corn to plant maize. But one thing I tell every engineer is make sure your fundamental and your first principle is strong. Meaning I can move corn and plant maize because I have confidence in my soil. So the guy from Lisa, after two and a half years, got a job and made an application in the country, uh, in Saudi Aramco, and they called him. And his first salary was about four million. And that's this guy's annual. And they gave him a lot of incentive, about 12 million. And that guy was going home with about 20 something million uh, uh, as a starter. So he got a lot of items. You see that all what this guy has been earning for two years, this guy is going to earn it for two months because he built skills and was patient. After some time, now he built a lot of skills. He now switched from being a petroleum engineer to a project management engineer. So now a project engineer, he started making a lot of money. That's the crop rotation, because he understands his soil. You see that my petroleum engineer is strong. Then now, let me see if I can switch to project. Now, that's the crop rotation. So I have an engineer, I will encourage every engineer to, to see how they can run the crop rotation model. Don't constrain yourself to petroleum engineering that you study. My background is electrical to computing to petroleum engineering. So basically, don't constrain yourself to petroleum engineering. Always make yourself open for crop rotation. So you need to, you can rotate in why in your various uh, departments. So you see that now, you see that now, what are those technical skills I need to put together? Yesterday, I joined the course for data science uh, by Melin. And it was very interesting. So first, the technical skills you need to develop as an engineer first, you need to first of all have a very good data analysis skills, very good programming skills, very good software proficiency skills. Now, we have some petroleum engineering software that you need to learn and just start. In as much as I made the first class, and I have very good knowledge of Ember, uh, and very good knowledge of uh, Eclipse, very good knowledge of OFM, very good knowledge of uh, TechLog, very good knowledge of uh, Prosper. I, another person made a first class, and I'm, I'm a programmer. I can program, have very good knowledge of data analysis. If I want to employ, both of you make a first class, I will employ this guy that have already made technical skills because it's going to be easier for me to train this guy than training you from scratch. So now, if this guy finishes documentation, he has very good technical skills, and he has a very good project management skills. Project management skills is very key for every engineer to understand this. Now, my technical skills, his ability and his ability are the abilities and knowledge needed to perform specific tasks. Now, these technical skills now, is, it takes one to data analysis. Now, data analysis, yesterday I joined your data analysis course and it was very interesting. She did a very good job and I would recommend that. And I would also encourage uh, all undergraduate to see how they can build around data analysis. It's a key, it's a game changer. It's what we need in the 21st century. She said she did a lot of job on data science, big data, data analytics. And also, I also see here, I was trying to just give you a description. I don't need to do the description again because she did a lot of work here by looking at data science, dealing with unstructured and structured data. 
But what we understand now is that there are a lot of data scientists that don't know how to analyze data skills. There are a lot of people that feel a lot of big filing in LinkedIn. I don't even know. It's not by certification. I finished a data model, data analysis course with Allison. I did a data analysis course with, with uh, you no, know, this is easy. This is not what we need to understand. I, I can be a data scientist, but I don't understand the data analytics tools. Now, all these things are things that I want every 21st century engineer to always understand and be, uh, and be ready for any challenge. Now, programming skills. Programming skills is one of those items that I encourage all my mentees to do. First, this is what I learned from Steve Jobs. He says, everybody, everyone should know how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. I will encourage every student here today to, uh, to know how to program. Just learn, just start from the, the basics and learn how to program. Learn how to program increase your thinking. It makes you think better. And it can be any language, but first of all, you need to consult some of the people in the industry. What language do you think I can learn that is going to make me relevant? The first language I'll tell you, learn Excel, learn Excel VBA, then wait for the rest. Then you now start moving on to the rest of Python, Turbulent, C, C Sharp, and Java. It's key. But you want to speak in a younger space, be, learn Excel, learn Excel VBA, because your production data comes in Excel, your web test data comes in Excel format, your web completion data comes in Excel, your PVT data can also be analyzed in a spreadsheet, and a lot of parameters from the oil and gas industry comes in Excel. So it's, I, I encourage everyone to learn Excel and build competence in Excel. Then you cannot add others. Now, 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 these are my, my I, I outlined these guys as the best programming language to learn in the 21st century. First is do Python, but I said default is Excel. You can add Python, you can add Java, you can add C, C++, C Sharp, JavaScript, Go programming, R programming, Swiss and MATLAB. They are key, they are key. It doesn't mean I need to learn all. Is better jack of all three, master of none. You can pick one or two and just be very strong. Ah, yes, I know I know Java very well. Ah, yes, I'm just in the Java space. You know Python? No, 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 no. I just don't feel like now, but I think it's something I'll develop over time. If you know one programming language, you're going to switch it to that programming language, it's not, it's not a big problem. So when I build all this knowledge in the programming space, then I think I, I normally drop this code because. Um, you can learn all the programming language, but you don't master any of them, it's useless. And programming is thinking, it's not typing. You don't go and type program. Before you think to write a code, you must understand what that code is doing or how that code works. Now, I, everybody, if you a programmer, a programmer will tell you, talk is cheap, show me your code. It's not about, yes, I can write a program, a program for 10 or 15 lines, uh, 50 lines that works. So, so is that, does that make me a programmer? No. Talk is cheap. Show me your code. So if I show you your code and my code is not sufficient, then you know what I mean. Don't worry. Thank you. We know who is a programmer. Now, this part is like a programmer's life. He works home, play, and sleep. And while he's sleeping, he's still programming because there are some errors that you encounter that will take you from where you're sitting down to where you're sleeping. And while you're sleeping, you're also coding. And you see a programmer jump from his bed and you're like, oh, sorry, sorry, I remember something. Now return back to the system and I start trying to code that, okay, yeah, this thing can work up this way. Let me see, I can try this way. Now that's how it works. And it's cool, it's cool. Programming is interesting you know, and I will encourage everyone to. Now, the software proficiency, now what do I mean by this? So at first things, I'll look at, I want to build a, a software skills. First is I look at the productivity software. I look at the industry-based software. I look at other softwares. Now, the productivity software, I look at the application uh, productivity software in terms of I encourage everyone to look at Microsoft Excel. I mentioned it earlier on. Now, most companies use Microsoft Excel because it's a cost-saving software. Now, I can use the Microsoft Excel to gain promotion in my company where I see that my company are having a lot of issues they are driving on. They work with the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. I can go back again to now make that spreadsheet automated and say that it's going to work as an application. 
and I build an application around the spreadsheet by not changing the parameter, then use that same spreadsheet to now run that same uh, item they are using in the company. Then I can do a very wonderful presentation to show how this spreadsheet works now and how it's going to help save costs. Now, they're making my company buy a new application to do this, but I can develop the same thing that this application is going to do. Then now you tell me if I do this in a company and the management want to sack you. No, it's difficult because now you're adding value, you're saving costs to that company. So that's why I call it productivity software. It's key for everyone to understand. Now, if I go go deeper again in Microsoft Excel, what do I need to know in Microsoft Excel? There are two things you need to know in Microsoft Excel. First is understand the function base, then go back to the code base. The code base now is a VBA. The function base is the normal function application that you talk about, like from your use your Excel function, Excel tab, Excel add-in, and all the various data analytic items. All of them fall in the function base. The code base now I now move a step forward to now start looking at the programming nature of Excel, where I can now start introducing my code, I can do my VBA, I can run my macros, and so on. Now, if you look at this now, you see that in the function base now, I can as well look at my function base to be, I can look at the Excel option, the chart, the function, and the menu. If I can go through all these menus, you see that my Excel, uh, my Excel competency has increased from 20 to 40 or 50%. It shouldn't just be the normal user of Excel that just put Excel and play and plug values in the spreadsheet and just add, enter, and do summation, give the result. You need to go one step forward. So that's what we are trying to discuss here in this uh, class. So uh, this is uh, the function base. In the function base, this is the Excel option. These are some Excel tools, and this is the menus. Uh, if you check my Excel, it may be different from your Excel because it has a lot of menus, and because my Excel is for application, it's not for Excel for market women that just add values and give me results. Inside the Excel, I have a Microsoft BI, I have Microsoft Power Map, I have a Microsoft Pivot, I have the Analysis Tool Pack, I have the Solver Adding. There are so much item I have in my own Excel that may be different from your own Excel. So showing that we are various user of Excel. So the next part is the code base. The code base is where you now go to the Excel macros, that is the Excel VBA, where you now have the virtual basic application in Excel. Where I now start coding, I have a lot of items I need to bring in as uh, a code or as a function or as a subroutine. With that, this has been a grammar that everybody wants to just see that ah, very soon. Don't worry, let's move to Python. Excel will die very soon. Our VBA will just die. No, no need. Just learn my Python. But I tell you, Excel will have another 25 years to stay. And in as much as you're learning Excel, Microsoft is also improving on Excel. RIP, Excel is not going to die. I tell you the truth because everybody needs Excel from the financial user to the HR to the marketing, project management professional, petroleum engineers, more especially high school accounting needs Excel. Excel have a very good lifespan up to like 2020-35 to stay. So now it depends on what you want. You want to wait then and wait for Excel to die before you go to learn it or you want to learn it now. Now, if I want to learn VBA, what do I really need to get first? I need to first of all understand what VBA or why I need to learn VBA. Now, uh, VBA is not for programmers or software professionals. VBA is for day-to-day -day user. It gives you a very good uh, advantage in terms of data analytics. There will be a stage where I need to automate the process. I need VBA. Now, VB decrease the percentage of mistake in some of the analysis you're doing. All those things I do, I can drag down, I can have some limitation, but if I write a code and that code works, I don't think there's going to be any mistake I'm going to encounter. VB is application for many different fields. You can use it as accountant, HR, financial uh, company, and so on. And VB does not call for additional expenses in terms of software because for every user or every system you find yourself, you always you always have a Microsoft Office uh, application on the system. So with your Microsoft Office, you can as well bring your you have your Excel as a package in the Microsoft Office suite. So and VB is very easy to learn and it saves time and money for organization because you're not buying the software. Now, um, this is what I saw online. It says every, every, uh, why you need at least one VBA expert on your team. 
Now, you have a team of five, you're trying to work on a project. Now, you need one VBA expert because in a much you're working on a project, there will be a stage where you need to automate, you need to do some analytics, you need to do some, some good analytic function. Then the VBA guy will like, okay, fine, let's see how we can. This is a repetition. I can use a loop. I can do a solve routine. I can solve this. I can just use a loop to do handle this now. That is when the VBA user comes. It thinks different from the guys in the team. The guys in the team may be smarter, but this guy is thinking a different dimension. He's seen a solution in whatever you guys are thinking. That is why I always need these guys in the team. So I encourage everyone to be relevant, to always at least think differently. So this is a quote I just got online, but I just think it's not so right. Now, why do I need to learn? What are the benefits of VBA? First is it gives me uh, other advantage in terms of automation to in all the repeated tasks, I can automate them. Visibility to user, user cannot see this application, not as a spreadsheet. You reduce formulas, yes, and I reduce the turnaround time in terms of processing or performing the task. I just do a VBA function that can just do all those items for me. And you see that it saves me a lot of cost in terms of for the organization. Now, the part I now mentioned is additional functionalities of Excel. Now, these guys are what everybody is thinking today. The query, you have the Power Query, you also have uh, the Power BI. This is one of the stronger tools now for data analytics. Now, we call it Microsoft Business Intelligence. Now, I encourage everyone to learn data analytics with Excel, at, at least no Power BI. If you don't want to go into the Excel space, go into the data analytics space where you now learn Power BI, Power Query. You learn the Power Soup where you have BI, Power Pivot, uh, Power Query, and Power Map. So we also have the ideas. Now, this item, this uh, function was one of those functions that Microsoft developed that works with the AI feature. Now you see that in a much as you're putting for Microsoft Excel to die, Microsoft is also updating Excel, trying to bring in artificial intelligence to Excel. And also it works with machine learning algorithm in Excel. Now how does this work? Now whenever you have a list of tables and you just highlight this table, Apparently, it's going to plot the graph for it to visualize the graph by the side without going to insert uh, insert uh, chart. Now, this tool is very good for a quick decision uh, company where I want to take a decision of uh, my data. I just need this function. We also have another function here called Dynamic Array. Dynamic Array is seen in in the Microsoft Office 365 and Office 365 Pro Plus. Now, dynamic array saves you the cost of using your control shift enter for array formula and your cost of doing your filter, your sort, and all those items with dynamic array. You just pass one function, it's going to cut it out and take it to a fresh sheet for you if you want to. So now, with the I don't need to start bringing in my sort, my array function, my uh, filter with my dynamic array. I can solve that out for me. We also have a unique function too that also handles some data analytics function too in Excel. We this item we also have a new function Microsoft do that that save that works far far better than the look the V lookup the H lookup the if error the index and match is called X lookup function. You see that while you're sleeping Microsoft is improving Excel and you want Excel to die. No, Microsoft still want Excel to be relevant. So it still goes back again now to, to work and make more additions in Excel. We also look at the industry-based softwares. Now, these are some of the industry-based software I've used over time uh, for my electrical career. I've used ETAB, AutoCAD, Solid Edge, Power Calculate, Cable Pro, Tina, uh, MATLAB, Simulink, Simulink, and Petroleum. I've worked with Petrol, EMP, I've worked with Eclipse, OFM, Sapphire, IPM suit, uh, CMG, PVTI, PVTP, PVTI, and SEPA for Sapphire Crescent. Now, in the mechanical space, I work with AutoCAD, CAD, MATLAB, FE, Microsoft Excel, VBA, Python, uh, uh, many things. Now, this application now, basically, most of us learn this application in a very hard way because when we finish school, we're looking at how we can develop skills and learn relevant application. Then we now embark on this mission. We will now build a uh, pick that application, see how we can study this application in less than two weeks, 
or three weeks to now perform a task for someone that is working on a project similar to that same application. So these are some of the things I encourage everyone as an industry based software. Look at the industry you want to move on. Try to see how you can study the software that are using so that you can add it to your CV and make yourself very relevant. Adding it to your CV when you don't know how to use it now is very dangerous. They may call you, ah, man, you know how to use Petra. Yeah, they don't bring one data for you and say, okay, please do the analysis for us and get an insight from this data. And you don't, you don't know how to open Petra. So it's always good to learn them. Pay money to learn this item. There's no money that is free. Just pay money to build the skills, not the certificate. The other software that I feel is necessary, these softwares are for data analysis in terms of using survey, Minitab, SPSS, Marble, Analytica. They are all cool for users or 21st century engineers to understand how the software works. Yes, while I was in the UK, we used Minitab and SPSS. When I came back, I have a project I was doing. I have to use Marble for this guy to do this project. But my knowledge of Minitab and SPSS, I was able to navigate the other two applications. So it's also cool for you to build this uh, type of skill. The next part is the technical writing skill. You may build all this application now, you may not be able to communicate this application now. Because at each point in time, you need to first of all develop and you need to first of all put down all what you've learned. Or, or say, as an intern, you need to put down this item in reporting. So I encourage every engineers to learn the technical writing skills and also go back again to Microsoft Word and see how you can pick up very few items to learn. First is look at how they style, Microsoft Word styles, how to do styling, paragraphs, font, caption, tables, and list of figures. Now, these are some of the things I learned in Cypher Christian while we were engineers. At each point in time, your documentation must be well formatted. If it's not, they'll decline it. And that one culture that Cypher Christian has, that uh, technical writing skills. It's very key for every engineer. So if I do that now, this is a major one that everybody, not only really a petroleum engineer, you need to learn project management skills. Now, project management skills is, is key. They say that at each point in time, you need to understand because you're not going to remain as a, as a petroleum engineer. They may drive you based on your skills. They may drive you to manage a project. And for you to manage a project, you must understand these four basic items, the scope, the time, the quality, and the budget. For every organization, number four is very important. And number two is very important. Because number four and number two will help save costs for them. Now, because if you budget 20 million for this project and you were able to now scope out this project very well, look at the timing and you deliver a very good project and you save like 10 million for the organization. They will give you an award. They say, yeah, this guy is a good. They will now push you to another bigger project again. You see that these four items are key. Now, assuming these four items are key as an organization, and now this organization I work for have interest to now move into project management and these are the software they want to buy. Uh, they have Microsoft Project 50K, they have Workbook 50K. Now, I discovered that the, my company is still struggling by this application. I can go to the last one, which is Microsoft Excel. I develop a project management tool using Microsoft Excel that is going to function as Microsoft project for me to use to analyze my project. It's key. Then I submit it to my manager and say, okay, we can be using this now for our project. And they're now like, okay, build it up again. You now build it up to an application. And the application is working perfectly. You now dedicate this application to the school. It's going to be a customized application for project management in the company. And you help now save the company. The least up cost here is $34,000 in terms of buying software. And one day, they are sacking staff in the company and they outline your name for those that want to leave the company. And the management will not kick against you. Say, no, it's not this guy. Because you are trying to contribute your own quota, you're trying to make yourself very relevant in the system, and it's key to everyone. So now, these are some of the time I, I try to see. This partner is uh, AI in project management. There are a lot of items, a lot of projects that everybody needs to understand in project management. I cannot start bringing my artificial intelligence to project management where I cannot start sensing my scope, my time, my budget. And so, so whenever I scope outside my budget, my application will now prompt that this item is going outside your budget. So X, Y, Z, you need to do this. 
you need to bring all the necessary scenario so now that's when now the artificial intelligence now comes in so this is a key part that every engineer needs to understand in terms of working with project so I also look at AI and machine learning project management. You look at artificial intelligence, look at machine learning, look at deep learning in project management. So if I, your student try to see how you can build application or build knowledge around these three items, then you see that it's going to make you more relevant in the industry because you're navigating between a petroleum engineer, project manager, and also data analytics engineer. So, and it's key. So now I was just trying to get some definition of this item, which uh, we already know. Now, most time uh, we have uh, project uh, role of uh, AI in project management. You, if in terms of estimation, I can bring in my very rigorous algorithm. I can bring in my regular algorithm in terms of estimation, in terms of resource management, in terms of KPI. I can do that. And my project rigs, I can do that for uh, planning. I can do that in terms of productivity and also in terms of resource management. I can do that in terms of building it as a complete system. So now this project management item is something that every engineer needs online. Now this partner takes also the non-technical skills. Now you build all the skills, all your technical skills now. You go back to the non-technical skills now. What do I need to learn now? In as much as you're in the system, you may be very smart, but you may not be relevant. Now, these are some cases that we see in non-technical skills. First is you need to, first of all, build a very good communication skills. You need to, first of all, build a very good presentation skills. You need to, first of all, build, know how to sell yourself. You need to, first of all, have a very good people management, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills is key for every organization. Now, that part now takes us to first, if I give you a, 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 an item for you to prepare a slide for me, you start bringing yellow, black, uh, purple color in a slide. I look at you as you're not relevant. Now, look at these two slide presentation. You see that the first one now is a value proposition. You now outline them in bullet. Then the second one now did a lot of package, value proposition. You see the items now. You see that if I see the second slide, I will tell you good job. I don't need to, read, I don't need to understand what you're presenting, but I will just tell you good job. Good job in the sense that your presentation was catching. You can have a very good presentation slide and you mess up inside the presentation hall, but most people will forgive you, like you spend more time doing the slide. But you can just come in, your slide alone will just draw everybody off and say, man, you guys, you guys, you're, you're stupid, you're not relevant, just pick up yourself and leave this place. Now, design is cool, but first of all, present, uh, uh, build a very good skills around uh, slide preparation where there are some templates online that you can also work with and it's very cool. Now, the other part that is very key, very, very key is on emotional intelligence. Now, understanding your emotion. Now, what do I mean by emotion? Now, this guy is supposed to be a very successful player, very, very successful player, but this guy have an F9 emotional intelligence. And that's why today now he's nowhere. We don't know where he is and we don't know the club where he's playing for and that's where he is now. So now, and also, you look at this too. I look at the emotional intelligence uh, in terms of EQ, and, and, and you also look at the emotional influence. Now, I say emotional influence, everything you do, every thought, every action, and every decision is very key. You may have a very annoying colleague in the office, but you need to, you need to now go and buy, you need to go and borrow, and you need to, you need to, you need to get this emotional intelligence to work with this guy. Now, it's in the sense that uh, your emotion, your perception, your, your psychology is also key to work with this guy. This guy, whatever you do in the office, irritates him, man. He just starts shouting and he just walk up from the office and like, I will never in my life respond to this guy negatively. So no matter where he wants to push you to, at that point, I see that your emotional intelligence is very high. Now, now, these are some two things you need to understand between intelligence and emotional intelligence. Intelligence, it measures one's intelligence. Emotional intelligence is referred to the capability of the person to manage and control their emotion. Now, this is the scenario in Nigeria. Now, I have this item here, like this is a bulb, or I have this sign. From my own perspective, I'm seeing it as six. I happen this guy is my boss, now he's seeing it as nine. How do I communicate this to my boss? That won't make him, won't, I won't, I won't, he won't pick offense. 
I say, ah, sir, this is nine. This is six. He said, no, shut up, John. This is nine. Now, you just allow this game to us. Out of pride in Africa, if, it's in the, if you are outside Nigeria, you can challenge this guy. You will do nothing. But if it's you are in Nigeria, you challenge this guy. The next two weeks or one week, you collect your determination letter and leave. But you can go back again and look at when this guy is in a very good mood because of pride, and you can just meet him, sir. Uh, can we go to Google? Look at Google. Look at this item we're talking about. It's actually six, not nine. He will not really choose. Oh, are you serious, Peter? That's really that's right. Oh, you're right. You're right. You see that out of pride, and he doesn't want him to look down or feel inferior. He will challenge you. He will not accept with you. And you see that you guys can work together. That's perception and emotional intelligence on a high level. The way I see things is different from the way you may see things. My background may be different from your own background. And the way I was brought up, the environment where I find myself may be different. So it's something that you need to also manage in workplace too. I call, I put the other non-technical skill. Now, four elements of emotional intelligence you need to understand is self-awareness. Before you enter environment, first of all, understand the environment, self-management, social awareness. Two things you need to understand. Your colleague in the office is not your friend and he's never your friend. Professionally, you finish all your discussion and you go your way. Relationship management is very important. I may be having issues with you, but I may not bring it out, but I need to make sure the company grows. So we need to just, I need to keep that relationship or that item we have for us to work very professionally. So now that part is key for every uh, organization. So these are some of the things I said, as much as it's important to have experience and skill, it is also very necessary to have the emotional intelligence to sustain one's leadership role. So these are some of the things I try to put together in terms of my end. Now, I tell this to young graduates, stay humble. Today, everybody feels in the Brazilian end that Robinho is going to be the replacement of Ronaldinho, but because of pride, and this guy was not humble, and he just ended up, we, we don't know where he is now. Now, he may work very hard, work hard, stay humble. Now, when you work hard and stay humble, it takes you to a higher realm in terms of career growth than when you work hard out of pride now. One thing you need to understand, no matter who you are in the company, you can always, they can always move you and get a replacement better than you. The only thing it's going to do is going to cost them more money. So when you do that, you see that we have a case of this guy. I use most of these guys because I study their career path. They say they're exclusive, physically skillful, destined for greatness, but nobody knows about his career now. Nobody knows where he is now. Work hard, stay humble. Now, if I do all this item now, I will now return back again to the Nigerian model that work. Now, in Nigeria, what works now? This is my second model. Uh, intelligence plus emotional intelligence will give you success. Because if I have, I'm very smart, I have a very rude character, man, even the manager will try to kick it off because we cannot bring people like this in the company. So very good emotional intelligence, very good IQ, smart, good IQ, give you good success uh, uh, career. So I call this a Nigerian model. And outside this part now, my next question is what next? What next means... What is the next process we need to take up as an engineer, as a student, as a young graduate going to the field? The first is wait for the opportunity. This guy was one of those good players in Chelsea that were just waiting on the bench, waiting for when they are going to feature him. When the first time they feature him, he became a very strong uh, player in, uh, in the Chelsea team. And now he won the man of the match uh, in the FA Cup fever. And now his knee is like... They're counting the first 25 players in Chelsea. That means he was waiting for his opportunity. And I encourage everyone, whenever you wait for your opportunity, then if you see that opportunity, may utilize that opportunity very well. If you're given an opportunity, utilize it very well. If you're going for internship, make sure you're very relevant as an intern. Forget the fact that they send you on errand, drop file, go buy bullet, buy newspaper, be very relevant. So that whenever they look at bringing any of the intern back, they are going to call you. And that's why you're waiting for the opportunity. The next part is uh, trust in God, and this part is very key, very key. Just believe in God that this thing I'm doing here, now, I'm going to have, I'm going to break through. I'm breaking through in the sense that I tell everyone God's grace will persist, and that's why every morning you just ask God for direction. 
in this earth where we have, we have hell, we have heaven, and you don't have angels physical, but you have human beings, you have angels in human form. And whenever God shows you someone, it can be like this person can be a destiny helper and can just say, okay, please, like what Jesus Christ told to Peter. Jesus Christ never he doesn't have an experience as a fisherman. He always told Peter, please drop your net at this end. Peter was doubting this guy. I made the first class in fishing. Who are you, Jesus Christ? We're like, no, we don't do that. So at that point now, he said, drop your CV here. They are going to call you. And that is why at each point in time, you need a mentor. And you need a mentor. At each point, I encourage everyone to just get a mentor. So when he dropped, when Peter did that now, he tried to pull the net. It was sounding as if something is happening. You do not believe that at the end now, Peter became an employer of labor. We get other fishermen to now help him to pull his net. And the question he now asks, who are you? Some mentors will come in to direct you. Some mentors will come in to give you focus. Mentors are not meant to dash you money or give you a job. But whenever they see opportunity, so like this opportunity will be good for Peter. This opportunity is a leadership opportunity. When Peter did this summit in Lagos State Session as a section president, as a chapter president, was able to manage it. Let me give him this opportunity. Yes, yeah, so um, Mr. John, I have one of my mentees. His name is Peter from University of Lagos. I need this position with food for him. Because this guy is coming from your mentor, and I believe in one principle. And that principle says, in God we trust. Every other person should come with data. Data in the sense that I need to have some relevant experience of my, my, my doings with you. The first item we did was a very successful year. I built data over time. I can use the data that Dr. Bailo, who is my mentor, has developed to employ Peter because I know that Dr. Bailo is a nice person. He can never bring any wayward person as a mentee for me. That is data. Dr. Bailey has sufficient data. If you plot the graph of Dr. Bailey's history, you see that you're going to have a very perfect slope. So that with that slope, I can use it to employ Peter. That's my, my, my trade. That is my principle. So the next end now is, um, this is what SP, increase your network. Increase your network. To me, I, my success story today as a managing director is, I would say, SP contributed like 50 or 55% to it. So your network, build your network. If you're in any SP event, be very relevant. Don't be a floor member. Try to get the position and try to function effectively. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. But just try to be very relevant. Make yourself very relevant. SP is one organization I will always recommend engineers to join. I belong to British, British Computer Society, IEEE. But I tell everyone, there are two organizations in the world that is very key, SP and others. Meaning SP is, a, is, is that organization that you can sit down with the country manager. You can, get, you can get an employment in just one communication with the country manager. And that's what SP does for you. And finally, sell yourself. At each point in time, you're going for events. Like we go for NAIS, we go for every monthly technical event. Try by all means, dress very corporate, build your LinkedIn profile should be very outstanding. Whatever you're writing on LinkedIn should be very outstanding. Whenever you're going for every event, be caution of your dressing. There's, the British guys believe in packaging. Package yourself very well. Whenever you're going for every event, just package yourself very well. Package your LinkedIn. Whatever you put on your LinkedIn, be something that you can defend. If you don't know it, you don't know it. Don't put yourself, I'm a big data analyst, big data advocate. And I don't even know how to analyze data in Excel. In as much as I'm selling myself, that first item that I ask you, the first appearance, the first opportunity I give you, and you feel I just give up on you. That's my principle. So um, my final discussion will now be start something. Start something doesn't mean uh, I just need to just finish school. I just sit down waiting for opportunities to come. Just start something. Start creating opportunities. Start looking at how you can be relevant. Start looking for intensive position. Start, start creating a business scenario that you can start modeling before the job comes. If the job comes, now you now know that, okay, yes. Yeah.
Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you very much for uh the lovely uh, lovely um course. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any question. If you have any question anyway, you can just uh drop it in the chat box quickly. Uh well I'll just uh be giving the final remarks for the chairperson and then they also come in. So um this officially is the ending of the industry discourse 2.0. Uh I'll be from this for this course. Actually we are taking out of the site schedule to um facilitate this lovely presentation and I would like to just appreciate it. I'd like to appreciate the other uh the other course tutor that took an um, introduction to data science uh yesterday. Uh we appreciate you. Um uh, I'd like to appreciate SP as a body that has given us this opportunity to link up with uh, industry professionals and like to appreciate SP legal section, our sponsoring section that has um supported us so far up to this point. Uh, uh, we say a big thank you as as the chapter uh, SP University of Lagos. Uh, I would like to also appreciate the Nigerian Academy of, of Engineering. Uh, they have supported us uh, for this event, and I would like to appreciate them. I would like to appreciate all our speakers in general. Uh, we cannot speak engineering justice. Uh, we have uh, eight on the, eight other uh, uh, industry professionals that have joined us. Uh, for the two panel sessions we had yesterday and today. Unfortunately, I'm not able to mention all of their names, but uh, we appreciate your efforts. I also like to uh, appreciate our sponsors. Uh, our sponsors, uh, Mr. Fred Medusote from Chevron and Joy Limited, uh, Engineer Justice, um, Mr. Saibenga, uh, Mr. Uh, Justin, AGK, Mr. Diola, and uh, SP Legal Section, and also Mr. Karim, everybody that has supported us to just ensure that the industry discourse 2.0 has gone, I was run smoothly. Um, so, in addition to our sponsors, I also like to appreciate. Uh, the uh the judges of the competitions that we have had we had the petrol debate and petrol quiz and our uh, winners have been contacted we had two judges um uh, like jacob and Ms. Karina. i just want to appreciate every single person that has in one way or the other uh assisted us and have been part of uh, this journey so far i would like everyone to please and please follow us on our uh social media handles if if you are not subscribed to our YouTube page yet, I will advise you to do so now because we have so many events coming up after the industry is first to Also, TID 3.0 will also be happening next year. I believe that the team will come up with something much more uh, interesting and engaging than, we are, than what we have this year. Uh, without um, any further thing, I would just like to um, give there any questions, Mr. Pindy can quickly address them. I need a number of questions. Uh, that means uh, we would have to do that. Uh, any, any questions from anybody? Okay. Uh, Mr. Pringle, so some yeah. of the participants I enjoyed your presentation and the, they are requesting it to support, they are asking it is possible to slide down Yes, sir. Okay, very good, very good. So that answers that's like that's pop up. I want to do that. So everybody that has joined and uh, registered, we send. Can I get the link to the. Can I get the link to the YouTube? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll send it to you via the chat box now. I'll just okay. pass it.
Uh, so, Mr. Prince, I've sent you the, the link. To the okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So, um, I guess that's that's all for now. We we'll have a very short uh, presentation to uh, an exhibition to share to all of our participants right now. Thank you. Uh, so at this point, the thing that has um, the industry this costly conservative planning committee started from the chair president of the this, uh, as a team, uh, on behalf of the Society of Fashion and Men's Investment Leaders, I'd like to appreciate everyone. I would like to appreciate the executive from um, executives of the chapter of SP University of Vegas. Uh, everybody has done really, really, really well. And um, we hope to see you at TID3. Please read um, our event of physical and people from all over the world can also join us. And on this note, I say a big thank you and see you soon. God bless.